In this tutorial, you're going to make a falling object game where cherries fall out of a tree and you have to try and catch them before they hit the ground in a bucket. It'll go through three different levels and the cherries will fall faster each level. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to start this off by showing you which browser we're going to launch Scratch in. So uh, our menu is in the lower left hand corner. It's this stylized LM in green. Click on that. It'll show you all the menu categories. Of course, we want to go to Internet. And then from those categories, click on the Brave browser. That browser seems to run Scratch the fastest on our systems. So click on that. Your browser should open up in Scratch. It might be ready to go, or you might need to just simply click the Create button. If yours isn't already in the programming window, just click Create. Right away, there's a couple things we don't need. One, we don't need this little tutorial window, so go ahead and click the X on that to close it. The other thing we don't need is Scratch the Cat. So we are going to uh, just click on this garbage can here, besides Scratch. Scratch his sprite, and that'll get rid of him. So click on the garbage can. So the first thing we're going to do is find a nice picture to use for a background. So anything to do with the background happens on this slice uh, of column here called uh, Stage. Um, to get pictures, you go to this uh, little icon down here. You don't click on it. It just you just slide over it. And then to find something that is provided to you by Scratch, you click on the magnifying glass. So that's what I want you to do right now, is just slide over here to this button under Stage and click on the magnifying glass. There's a lot of backgrounds provided with Scratch, uh, but we want something outdoors, so there's some categories. So I want you to click on the outdoor category, so that's what we'll be looking at. So what we really want for our game is a picture that looks like we could be standing under a tree. And there's a pretty good one for that, and that's this one. And it's simply called Tree, so find that and click on that. And there we go, we've added a background. So we're going to want two copies of this background, so any of the edits we do to backgrounds will be in this tab called Backdrop. So click on that, please. The first thing we can do is tidy up a little bit. We still have the original uh, blank backdrop that was given to us at the start. We can get rid of that, so just click on the garbage can beside it. Now we want to make a duplicate of our new backdrop, so that's simply a matter of right-clicking and selecting Duplicate. So go ahead and do that. Right-click on the original backdrop and uh, click Duplicate from the menu. So the first thing I want you to do to make this uh, second screen a Game Over screen is just write the word Game Over in it. So to do that, you just click on the T for text and then click anywhere on the screen. Don't worry, we can move this around later and type in all caps Game Over. Don't worry if you can't read it very well because of the color, we'll fix that. And don't worry if the placement isn't great. Just type it in for right now. Okay, now that we got Game Over in there, I want you to click on it and drag across it so it's all highlighted. It'll just turn a little darker color. But now we can change the color of it because we've highlighted it. We can go up here and I think what will be better is if it's just white. So I'm going to drag this all the way, the saturation all the way to zero and this one all the color all the way to 100 and brightness all the way to the bright side. And that should give us a nice bright white. So you want your uh, sliding tabs here all the way right for the top, all the way left for the middle, and all the way right again for the bottom. And that's it for this step. Go ahead and do that. Okay, finally the last step we'll just click out of here to make that go away. You can grab the little blue balls on the corner to size this, make it bigger, and then you can grab the word itself to position it in the middle. So go ahead and do that. And that's it we need to do here. Uh, so I'm just going to back up and go back into this sprite section uh, which has a similar uh, picture icon and we this time we want to paint our own picture. We're going to create a sprite. So hover over the choose a sprite button and go up to where it says paint and click on that. On the left you'll see that we've got a new window very similar to what we had with the picture where we can draw our own item. So first let's choose a color. Let's go to fill and this time we want a red color, so just move your saturation all the way way over to red. Or I'm just going to stop at 81 saturation for that red. So go ahead, change your color to red. Okay, then we can click off that box to make it go away. We want to draw a circle, so I'm going to click on the circle tool and just go to the middle 
and draw yourself a little circle like that. Now, there's one thing I don't particularly like about Scratch 3, is how it centers objects. In the center of your screen, you'll see some light, a light gray dot, kind of a, a tighter clumping of these little gray dots that make up of it. That is the center. To center an object and give an object a center, you put it over top of that. It's not very visible, it's not easy to see, but that's how you do it. So that's your step here, is make sure that you can put the center of the circle you drew over top of those two little dots squished together in the middle. If you can't see them, ask your instructor over to help you find them. One of the things I do like about Scratch 3.0 is that when you draw something here, you immediately see it show up here. So when you make adjustments to it, like sizing it with these nodes on the side, you will see the change over in your game. So you always know what size what you're drawing is is going to appear in the game. And we want these cherries to appear fairly small. So shrink them down a bit and they want to look like maybe this or even a shade smaller in your game. So size your cherry there. Of course it doesn't quite look like a cherry yet. So let's make a, a stem and some leaves on it. But first we need to make sure it's unselected so we don't make any changes to this object. So this is our selection tool. Click on that and then just click on nothing off to the side and you'll see the selection around the circle goes away. So do that. Okay, now we want to make sure that we have a good color for a stem. So we're going to go up to our fill area, click on this little down arrow and your brightness, if you turn the brightness down on red, it turns into a pretty nice brown. So I'm going to turn mine to uh, yeah, about 50 on the brightness and I might even change the saturation I just want a little lighter brown I think we'll turn the brightness back up and yeah, I'll do okay so find something that works out as a pretty decent brown for yourself and then just uh, once you've got that brown just click off the side to make the tool go away okay so now we'll paint it in so we'll need the paintbrush so click on that just go to the top center of your circle and draw something that goes up and to the side. Simple as that. All right, so now we're going to go in uh, for a, another color. Let's do green. So click down on the down arrow. You can see a little bit of green here in the spectrum. So just pull into that and then adjust your saturation and brightness till it's exactly the green you want. And uh, that's it. Go ahead and make your selection for your color of green. All right, so then we're just going to click off to the side. And for the leaf, we're going to do a hand drawing again. So we're going to stay with the brush tool. So you just want to, let me zoom in a little bit. You just want to swerve out and then into a point, swerve out and then into a point, and then put a little line in the middle of that. So do that one more time to give yourself a second leave, out into a point, swerve out into a point. Doesn't have to look great, just has to look something like that. Okay, so draw your leaves. Okay, so our leaves need a fill color. So we're going to choose a color a little darker. We're just going to take the same color we have and we'll darken it some by moving it down the brightness. And that should be enough. So choose yourself a little bit of a darker green for this step. Okay, so now we'll click off of this to make that tool go away, and we'll select the Fill tool this time, and just click in the white space that you left when you made the leaf the last time, and that'll fill it in with that darker color, and that's it for this step. Okay, that's it for our cherry. We can now create another sprite, so what I want you to do is go back over into the sprite area, hover over the cat and click on the paint option again. This time we're going to create a bucket um, and the bucket will be brown again so we're going to first step was we're going to click uh, select a brown color so brown either all the way out over to the left or all the way over to the right and then a little change on the saturation will get us something brown so make your selection for a brown color Okay, then we can just click off to the side. This time the tool we want to use is the line tool. So click on the line tool and then somewhere around that center spot 
you're going to want to pick an upper left hand side. So I'm going to pick there and I'm just going to draw it down so it comes inward to here. Then I'll click across so it goes straight across to the right. Then I'm going to click up and outward to the same height. And then I'm going to click again holding it down and dragging till it comes back to where it started. And that's it. You try that. If you need any help, remember your instructor is right there in the class with you. Okay, now we're going to stick with the same color and then we'll choose bucket fill and we'll click that to fill our bucket. And that's it. That's really all we need for a bucket in this case. So um, finish it up and we'll go on to the next step. Actually, there is one other change I'd like to make to the bucket. So, and it's going to involve the color black. So, go ahead and drag your brightness all the way over to this side. That should make this black. Click off to the side to get rid of it. So, uh, that's your step. Make this black. Okay, and now that we got a black fill, I want you to select the circle tool. And with the super circle tool, let's see if it drag draws from the middle or the end. I'm going to assume it dry, draws from the middle, so I'm going to go to the middle of the bucket and draw out. Well, and that didn't quite work, but that's fine. So I've got this circle that covers halfway. I want it to go all the way, so I'm going to grab these little node tools and stretch my circle so it goes end to end. And then I just want to kind of work my circle so it looks like it's, it's the top of my bucket. It's the opening in my bucket. Now there is, if you hold down control, so it's kind of hard for me to work because I'm not that close to it, but if you hold down control and roll your mouse wheel, you can zoom your drawing in and that'll give you a finer control over how you draw this. So now it's very easy for me to get hold of my nodes and bring them in right to the edge of the bucket. Then I can lower this so it fits right on the bucket just right. So uh, there is that's what I want you to do. But I also want you to make note of that tip that if you hold control down and roll your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of your picture. So put the hole on your bucket and you'll be done this step. Okay, so your bucket should look about this size within the thing. And what I want you to do is just drag it down so it's on the lower edge of the picture. And that's it for drawing. We're going to now switch over to the coding tab. So find coding tab along the top with costumes and sounds and click on that. All right, so let's make sure that you're still coding under the bucket. So the, the sprite 2 should be highlighted, the bucket. And the first code blocks I want you to find are these ones, the when flag quick block and a forever block. Uh, they're in two different categories, uh, but find each of them and snap them together like that. So you probably know these blocks pretty well now. This one starts the game when the flag is pressed, and this one executes the code inside it forever for as long as the game is played. So what we want to do inside that loop, what's going to occur forever inside that first loop, is control of this bucket. This bucket we want to move left and right as the mouse moves left and right. But we don't want it to move up and down. We only want it to move along the bottom. So it's different than the way we've had things follow the mouse before, where it's followed it everywhere. We only want it to follow on the left and right. So we're going to do something a little different uh, than before. Uh, we're going to ask you to see what you would put in there uh, to make that happen. So go ahead, make a guess, and I'll show you how I put it together in the next slide. Okay, so here's my solution, um, and you can compare it to yours. So when we move this guy left and right, you might notice along the bottom that the Y position is around negative 160 and stays there all the time. It's really only the X position that changes. So we want it to take the Y position of 160 and always hold that, but we want this X position to change with the mouse. And this is how we do this. Uh, go to motion, grab a go to block that gives you both control over X and Y. Uh, since I last left the thing at 160, 
uh, I'll leave this as negative 160, so there's the negative 160 taken care of. And then the only thing else we need is, um, I think, uh, under sensing, we need to know what the mouse's x position is. So we go, oh, there it is, mouse x. So that was under sensing. There's a block called mouse x. Put that there. And then when we run this code, we got a bucket that moves only along the x-axis. So go ahead. If you haven't come up with this solution already, go ahead and use this solution here. So believe it or not, that's all the code we need for our bucket. So what I want you to do right now is just uh, click on Sprite 1, the cherry, so we can start coding that. So for the cherry, the first code block I want you to find and put in is, of course, the when flag click block. So find that and okay, let's get started. Now, this game is going to have a whole bunch of cherries that end up falling. So rather than coding all these different cherries, why don't we use clones? So I don't think we've done that before. Maybe we have. Um, but what we're going to do with a master cherry, so this cherry is going to end up being our master cherry. So it's going to spend most of its time being hidden. So I want you to find a hide block and just stick it on there. Now, in this game, a hundred cherries will drop. So we need to make a hundred different clones, which is going to be the same action done over and over again a hundred times. So what kind of block is great for continuing the same action a certain or a set number of times that you define? See if you can make a guess before I show you what's under the guess this block uh, cover. Okay, so if we want to repeat something a hundred times, we would just grab the repeat block and put a hundred inside it. So that's what I want you to find if you haven't found it already, and just put it under there. So the next block I want you to find is this one. Create a clone of myself. So this character, this particular sprite here, is just going to remain hidden. But it's going to make clones of itself, which we're going to code to show up along the top and start falling. Um, so find this, and when you find it, put it right in there. Now, if we ran this code the way it's written here, there's nothing to slow the computer down. And remember, computers are blazingly fast. So these hundred clones will be created just like that. So we need something to slow it down. What block do you think I have hidden that would be perfect to slow this down? Okay, so if you guessed a weight block, you were absolutely right. So if we throw this in here, a new clone will be created every one second. And we're going to test that out. We might have to change that to two, depending on the gameplay it makes or something like that. Um, but we'll leave it as one right now. So go ahead and put that block in. So this next block, I believe, is a new block as well. Um, when I start as a clone. So find this block and put it at the top to start a new programming sequence. Now remember, the master cherry here is hidden. And when we create a clone of the master cherry, it will also be hidden. So I want you to go find the block that will reverse that. See if you can find it on your own, and I'll show you what it is on the next video slide. Okay, so to reverse a hidden block, you're going to need the show block. So find show and put that in next. Okay, so we're going to play another game of guess this block. So this block that you're going to define is actually going to be two blocks. And it's going to be a combination of one block with another block inside it. So this is what they need to do. It needs to make the new clone cherry appear along the top at a Y value of 162. Which will put it right near the top. So we want a Y value of 162, but we want an X value of any random placement between negative 240 to 240. Let's make it negative 220 to 220. What would that look like? What is hidden behind this guess this block? Okay, so here's the answer. So what's hidden behind this guess this block is a go to. So with this was with this block, we're going to go to the x value that is picked random by this pick random block, negative 220 to 220. So you'll have to find one of these blocks and one of these blocks. Put this one in for the x, which will give us a random value of negative 220 to 220, and then just put 162 in for the y. That way we can consistently 
have a new cherry dropping off somewhere along the top. So go ahead, make that change if you never guessed that uh, the, when it was challenged. Okay, now let's talk about falling. Uh, falling happens when we change the y position, like I'm showing here. Uh, we change y by negative 10, it's going to go down just 10 pixels. But then we want that to happen again, and then again, and again, and again. A total, if it happens a total of 36 times, well, uh, 10 times 36 is 360, and that's the total height of this window. So if we can make a fall of 10 happen 36 times, we'll fall all the way to the bottom. What's a good code block that will make something happen 36 times? Okay, you should be getting pretty familiar with this one by now. The repeat code block. So with the repeat code block, we're going to make this guy fall all the way to the bottom. And we should be able to test our code now. But complete this step, and then we'll go on to testing the code later. All right, let's test it out. We'll hit start, and we can see cherries are falling. And they're falling in random spots. But they're starting to accumulate here at the bottom. So maybe we can take care of that next. If you're test isn't getting the behavior you're seeing here, call over your instructor for a little help. Don't worry that this says game over right now. We'll take care of that in a bit. So I'll show you this one. This is another clone specific code block and you'll find it with the other cloning code blocks. Um, at the end of this journey, after it's repeated its 36 steps of negative 10, it'll be at the bottom. So we can get rid of this clone because it's already hit the ground, which is this delete this clone block. So put that in. Okay, so now I've added actually a block to the code, and you can see I've covered it with the guess this blocks uh, code blocks. But when I start it, you can see now the difference with the cherries is they're turning slightly as they fall. What code block could you add just below change y by negative 10 uh, that would make the uh, cherries turn slightly uh, like they are here in this video? Okay, so the answer for that is the turn block. So I could have turned left or right, and I did change this from 15 degrees to 5 degrees to make it turn more slowly, uh, but that's all you need. So go ahead and put that in if you haven't done that already. Okay, so when we play the game, you can see that we fall right past the bucket. There's nothing checking to see if we're touching that bucket. So. Our fall happens here. In this repeat loop, we repeat the decreasing by negative 10, and that's where we fall. So it's inside here we need to check. So what combination of two code blocks can we use to check uh, if we've made contact with the bucket? How would you do that? All right, so here's the combination I want you to find. It is an if condition, but inside it from sensing, you're going to use a touching code block and you're going to see if you're touching sprite 2 from the drop down. So combine that all together and put that in right there in your repeat loop. So we're checking every step of the fall. Before we code what's going to happen when we touch the bucket, there's something that's been bothering me and it's this game over that's been showing all the time. And that's because we're on the wrong backdrop. If I go in the backdrops you can see we've got tree and tree 2. We've got tree 2 selected um, and we could just switch here by clicking on that but we want uh, to do it programmically. So let's go back to the code for sprite 1. Click on sprite 1. Go to code and I want you to find a code block that is going to right at the start right after when flag clicked is going to change the backdrop to the starting backdrop, the one that does not say game over. Can you find that code block? Okay, so the code block you need is switch back, uh, switch back, uh, sorry, switch backdrop code block. And of course we want to have that set to the original code block tree and then that'll just go there. So that, when we run the game, will fix our situation. But here's something else we can do. Duplicate this put this back together and we know that after a hundred cherries have dropped the game is over so we can switch to our new backdrop there so make those changes before you move on to the next step 
So what's going to happen if we're touching spray to the bucket? Well, then we caught a cherry, so we get a point. But we don't have a point variable. So that's what I want you to do here, is create a point variable using your, uh, your options in the variables category, and then use from the what results from creating that variable, grab uh, a set points to zero and put that at the start, and then grab a change points by one and put that inside one of the things that happens if we're touching Sprite 2. Now that you've done that step, there's one thing you have to do, and I'll just show you. In order to make your points variable show up in your screen, you just have to click beside it right here. And that will turn it on in your game so you can see the amount of points you have while you play. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and test our game. And I can tell you, we're going to have something weird happen. So we'll click start. And then when we hit the cherries, take a look at your points. They zoom up. Uh, you get a point for every time during the fall that the cherry is hitting the bucket. And it goes back to zero every time a new clone is created. So let's see if you can figure out why those bugs are happening. So take a look at your code, see if you can determine why those bugs are happening, and I'll try and explain in the next video slide. Okay, so the first bug that I want to tackle is it always resetting to zero every time there's a new clone. Well, that's because we have put this set points to zero under when I start as a clone. So every new clone has a new setting to zero. So instead of having it there, we should have it under when f this one when flag quick because that only happens once the start of the game only happens once so that's your first fix do that okay so we'll put our code back together here and let's tackle the other problem the other problem is that let's pretend my arrow is the cherry it's following 10 pixels at a time and then it hits the bucket so we get a point it hit the bucket but it only falls 10 pixels it's still touching the bucket so we get another point follows 10 pixels, another point. So our problem is we haven't made that cherry go away when it first hit the bucket. So to make the cherry go away, we can use a delete this clone again. So we'll duplicate the delete this clone on the bottom and we'll put that on the bottom here to make the clone go away as soon as it touches the bucket. So then when we catch things, we only get one point per cherry, just like we should. So go ahead and make that change. Okay, here's another bug fixing challenge. So we've got cherries falling, but if I side swipe a cherry, hit it with the side of the bucket, I still get a point, even though it's not actually falling in the bucket. How can we fix that? Okay, so here's an answer for this one. The problem is this. If touching Sprite 2 means touching any of this, we really only want to sense for if we're touching the black. So there is a sensing option for that. We go sensing, touching color, put that in instead, click on the touching color, and then at the bottom you see this little uh, uh, dropper. Click on that, and you can click just on the black here. So now we're sensing for the black of this. There's one problem to watch for when using this technique, is if this black exists anywhere else in this picture, then you're gonna get points just by passing that part of the picture. So we'll need to test it out. So we're at zero, and I don't seem to be getting points for anything else except touching the right part of the bucket. So we're good. All right, so I'll stop it. I'll show you what it looks like here. Go ahead and make that change, and you can also just get rid of that. So make that change before the next slide. Okay, so now let's try it one more time. Everything works, but there's still a bug in the game, and the bug has to do with the gameplay. At these things falling every one second, um, it's actually too easy to play. So how would you fix that? So if you answered that question by saying, well, I would just change this weight here from one to 0.5 or something like that, well then you're right. That's the correct answer to the question. But I want you to try to do something else. I want you to create a new variable called speed and then bring out a set block and we'll set speed to 0.5 and bring out the speed container itself 
um, and have those two ready and I'll show you what to do with them in the next slide. Okay, so what I want you to do is take this set speed and we'll put it up to the top so the initial speed will be 0.5 and then instead of having speed as 0.5 there, we'll put the variable container in there, which is now representing 0.5. So that will give us our faster speed. So go ahead and make those changes. Next, I want you to find a repeat block, um, just like we've used a couple times before. But I want you to find it and put the number 3 in it. So do that for me, please. So we're going to use this repeat block around this other repeat block. So make sure that this switch to game over is outside of the repeat three so you should have this repeat block surrounding this repeat block so make that change please now i want you to go back to your variables section and find this change block um, change it from points to speed and make the value negative 0.2 so make sure it has that decimal so it's a value less than one but greater than zero and we're gonna make it negative because we're gonna be subtracting so once you have that all uh, just as I've shown here I want you to move it in so that it is the first block under repeat three now a couple changes I want you to make I'll give them to you one at a time first since we're subtracting point two before we even run our first thing we're gonna change our initial speed value to 0.7 and that way when we subtract the first 0.2 we will be at 0.5 uh, when it first runs then we'll go to 0.3 and then we'll go to 0.1 so make that change just change this first line set speed to 0.7 okay and then the next change is I want you to break this part just for a second so we can take this hide block and we're gonna put it under here uh, under where it says change speed by 2. Let's just keep it simple like that. Put it under uh, change speed by negative 2. Then I want you to get two other blocks. One a show block, easy enough, and the other one this say block for two seconds. Um, and inside the say block I just want you to put starting level. So those are going to go on top of the hide and the show will go on top of the say. So once you have those in there, put it all together so it'll be show, say, hide. So go ahead and do that. And before you start and test your game, I want you to read through the code I just gave you and try and predict the behavior you're going to see because of that code. Okay, let's try our game. So now it starts at zero and we get a little thing that says starting level at the bottom there and it is quite a bit faster catching the uh, cherries is quite a bit more challenging and I'm more interested in playing it through to the end because I know when I peak this level it's going to become even more challenging still so this level's got quite a bit to go I'm actually going to pause and I will start a recording again when we get to the next level so you can see I'm actually doing quite well I've caught oh now I'm starting a new level here and they're coming quick, but I had like 95 on that first level. But now they're coming like mad. And I'll pause again and let you know how I do on this level. And now we're at the final level. And I did pretty good still at the other one, but there's no way I can catch everything on this level. This level's insane. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed making the game. You play it yourself and uh, see how you can do. I might even let you see my total score. You can see if I can beat it on all three levels. My gate, uh, total score is 250. See if you can beat that.